Hello, everybody. Welcome to yet another episode in the Coaching Connection. I am Rina Lang, one of the co-founders of this community. And today, I'm very ple pleased to have Gail Scott with us. And we met a couple of months ago, and she was very adamant that Clubhouse works for coaches. And I didn't want her to spill too many beans back then, but I am very, very curious to see how she um, has been using Clubhouse in her coaching, what wonders has it been doing, been doing to her bottom line. So I'm very, very curious. So Gail, why don't you go ahead and uh, share a bit more about yourself, what kind of coaching do you do, and how did your Clubhouse journey even begin? Well, good morning, Rena. I'm so glad to be with you guys today. Well. Um, my story with Clubhouse did not start off with a bang, um, but a little background. I am a consultant who helps women to look their best, both in person and in social media. And I really work with them to make sure that what they're putting out there as far as graphics and content is aligned with their brand and their message. And sometimes we find there's a big disconnect, Rena. What they think they're saying is not what they're saying at all. And then, of course, as we age, as midlife women, we struggle with that camera. We have a love-hate relationship with it. We love how other people look and usually hate how we look. But there's trip, you know, just tri little tricks and tips that we can use to make ourselves look our best, like, um, you know, carefully choosing your outfit for the day can make all the difference. Like when I show up with a black top with this black hair, that's not the best look. Choosing our background carefully, our lighting, our camera angles, all those can make a big difference in how we look on screen. I'm also one half of the Midlife Moxie podcast where we talk about all things midlife women and encourage you to make this one of the best seasons of your lives. So Clubhouse, um, I was working with someone on social media myself and improving my social media game. And she said, you should check out Clubhouse. And I said, no, thank you. Enough social media. Don't need any more of that. And it sat in my soul, though. It kind of, you know, how things just kind of get in you and you can't stop thinking about it. And you think, OK, I'll check it out. I know it's not what I need to do, but just so I can check that off my box. So I went over, and when I saw what Clubhouse was all about, I was like, Gail, you've got to get over yourself. This is a perfect platform and opportunity for you because I've always been a good speaker. I've always loved to teach and to pour into others, and it became the perfect platform not only for that, but also for learning and networking with others. So that's how it started, Rena. <laughs> Excellent. I can already see that you have a like radio, uh, what you call the moderator vo voice and the way you speak. I'm like, wow, she's really, she's really good at it. And so, so what is Clubhouse all about? Why, why is this the right place for you to do business? Um, I'm not very familiar with Clubhouse. I have the app. I've never really snooped around. So, <laughs> and many, many of our viewers, I assume, are kind of like at the same stage. So, what does this platform truly offer? How does it work? Where, how can coaches position themselves? Why don't you just go, go ahead and share your marketing secrets with us? <laughs> well, when I stumbled onto Clubhouse, when it was introduced to me, I was at the beginning of the pandemic and I had always been in a face-to-face -face business. That's the way I primarily operated. How about an eyeball, knee to knee and toe to toe. And so when the pandemic started, that was um, a little bit of a um, startling event for us to figure out how are we going to work now? How long is this going to last? How do I meet people? How do I network? How do I do all the things? And so when I realized that Clubhouse was a social audio platform, which means it's only audio, you don't even have to look fantastic to get on there, that it was worldwide, and that there were a lot of people in there that were my target client, my target avatar, I knew I had to get involved. So the way it works is you can be giving, receiving, networking, just listening, you can kind of take advantage of this platform in a variety of ways, depending on your needs at the time, your schedule, your lifestyle. And that's one thing that really appealed to me. I didn't have to be committed to any certain time of the day. I didn't have to show up with my makeup and hair done. I didn't have to prepare a speech. I, sometimes I could just receive. And in the beginning, that's what I did while I tried to figure it out. And 
I love that it's a place to learn on top of a place to network. But basically, there are the structure of a club and a room. And clubs are groups of people that have some type of uniting interest. Maybe they're, um, you know, by demographic or a hobby or their business or just what they're on the platform for. And then the rooms are the actual events, the times that something is going on, that there are people on there speaking and listening. So rooms are basically like meetings is the way you want to look at that. So you're able to go on there and cultivate an experience that aligns with what you're there to do. So I quickly align with midlife women, with women I knew would help with image, hair, makeup, fashion, all the things, and things that I was interested in. I quickly learned there were a lot of podcasting rooms too, where I could learn the craft of podcasting, which was something I was interested in doing. And I don't think our podcast would have launched as quickly had it not been for Clubhouse and all the people I connected with there. We were able to actually use it for a proving ground for our concept and build an audience before our podcast even launched. Now think about the power of that, that you can have people following you and interested in your next workshop, in your program, in your just your client community, whatever it is you're promoting as a coach, you can garner interest for that. Also, here's the real big arena. You know, we can type up things, we can do a lot of print, we can do a lot of graphics, but there's nothing like hearing you do your thing. Would you agree? It's really magical. And so when you get on Clubhouse and you're in a room and there's a topic that you're proficient in, that you're an expert on, and you get to start speaking your language and doing what you do, that attracts people to you in a whole new way. And so say you're a coach for, um, you know, give me an example of some of the ladies that might be listening to this. Well, I do coach also uh, around um, getting businesses off the ground. Mm -hmm. So just generally yeah. social media strategy and such. Gotcha. So what that might look like, you may be in a room about, are you thinking about starting a business? And here's the cool thing. Once you become a moderator, once you either own your own club or other people have given you the, the power to moderate in their club, then you can create the rooms around what you need them to be about. So once I had learned how the platform worked and I had really kind of tested the waters, going up and speaking on other people's stages in their rooms, I formed my own club and I started to form rooms that allowed me to shine and allowed me to talk about the things that I was an expert on. So like in your case, you might do a room that says, you know, five tips for starting your business or where business owners get it wrong. And you're not going to give them, of course, your whole pie for free, but you can give them some tips and it lets them show that you as a coach, as a consultant, as a business owner, know what you're talking about. They can also engage with your personality and see what your communication style is. And some people will just instantly fall in love with you and want to do business with you. <laughs> Apologies. I think I'm being, I'm being, uh, I'm appearing on Facebook rather than you. Uh, just one sec. I am going to try to spotlight you. Okay. Now it's better. Um, and so, um, just one sec. So, Gail, how, how how many hours do you spend on this platform? Um, do, do you have like a recurring podcast that you do, or or how how much time do you spend on it? How much time involvement does it need? It can be as little or as much time as you want to be because you get to choose. Now, in the beginning, I spent a lot of hours because I was learning, I was consuming, I was understanding the platform, I was learning who the players were, I was creating alliances and networking with other women um, in my space so that I could be involved in their clubs and get in front of their audiences. And that's super important. And I tell people, you've got to do your time. There's going to be times you've got to sit your little honey in chairs and listen and just absorb and be supportive of other people before you're going to get that support back. So I did spend a good many hours in the beginning, um, some days more than others, but that's the thing, you're in complete control. 
So most rooms last about an hour. Now, some go on for days, literally some may be 30 minute rooms, but an hour is kind of the standard. So that's kind of the expectation when people come into a room and think about that in terms of think meeting and or presentation. And then, you know, decide if that room's for you or not. When you enter it, there's no obligation to stay in a room and everybody understands people come and go. So you're not committed once you join a room or meeting and you can kind of flow in and out to find ones that resonate with you and ones they're giving you what you need or what you're looking for. Now, over time, I started to curate my experience and be more strategic with my time on Clubhouse. I started to see the places where I could really connect and grow my following, and I started to see the places I didn't really want to be a part of. And so you do that by selecting the topics in your profile and the people you follow and the clubs you join. That way, the algorithm will show you the rooms that should be of most interest to you. So over time, we did create some standing rooms or that, you know, that term we're using for meetings. And we built them around times that we felt like our audience was there and it worked for us. So we love that freedom and flexibility. And if there's a week we're not available, we just don't do the room. But yes, to your question that we did form some standing times and we learned when other people were having rooms that we were interested in or that could be of benefit to us. And so what are some of the mistakes you believe some coaches make when, when it comes to Clubhouse? Well, a couple of things I've noticed that don't go over real well. One, everybody thinks, I want to go in the biggest room there is. I want to go in the room where there's a thousand people out there, and I want to get on that stage. You're probably not going to get on that stage. That's not the way this works. So I find more intimate rooms, maybe 20 women, even 10 people allow me to really connect with other people. So don't be lured just by big numbers. That may not be the place for you to meet your next prospect. Also, don't be what we call a pitch and ditch. And that's when you go into a room that allows you to talk about what you do and you just quickly tell them what you do and then leave the room. We need to be in these rooms to support others as well as tell others what we do. And when you support others, that's going to come back to you and you're going to build those alliances and those relationships that will really pay off in the form of referrals and connections. I've met several people who they may not have, you know, signed up for my specific services, but they connected me to their audience and those people signed up for my audiences. So those parallel alliances can be just as important as the client that you're finding on there. Also, let me say this. One other thing, I would be remiss if I didn't say this. You can waste a lot of time there, but that's going to be all in your own discipline and how you curate your hallway. And like I say, you can't be lured into rooms based on size and you can't be lured into rooms where there's drama because, of course, it can get interesting to listen to what people are arguing about or have opinions about. But you've got to be really zoned in on why you're there. And I got really clear about that from day one. I'm here to grow my business. I'm here to be strategic. And that's what I've stuck with. And so I don't allow myself to get lured into that. And that reminds me, when we met, you said you, you were very strategic about how you were going to use Clubhouse. So, it, so what is your strategy? My strategy was to find the clubs and find the rooms where my target prospects were and people that I could connect with that would lead me to my target, you know, client, but also target situations as well as audiences and have those collaborations come to be. And that's been a big part of Clubhouse. It's something that's talked about a lot on Clubhouse is this collaborative space where we get in there and we hear what someone else is doing and we think, hmm, what can we do together? What can we put together? Oh, you have a podcast. I have a podcast. Let's do a swap. Let's do a room together and cross pollinate our audiences. So that was very top of mind. But the way that I learned to work what we call those clubhouse streets was to weave, you know, find the thread that weaves through networks of people. 
So say I found you, Rena, and you had a club on there, and your club was, you know, filled with people I was interested in, and your club was talking about subjects I was interested in. I would follow you, but then I would also go to your club and see who the other leaders of your club were, who else had you given moderation um, abilities. And I would know those are probably people I'm going to have a similar um, kinship to. They're going to be speaking on similar topics. So I would then follow them because when you go into a club, you can see the other members of a club. And if we're united through a common interest or a common demographic, then the other members of that club very well may be people we want to get to know. I would then also go, once I made, say, Susie was one of your friends and I made a connection with Susie, I would go and look and see what other clubs Susie was in. And so I started to create this thread that wove through that led me to more clubs and more people that had that commonality um, of subject or demographic that I was looking for. And that just led me to more and more people. And so when you join those clubs and, and you have rooms where you share your content or your ideas, does it get recorded? Is it possible to listen to the replays after that or how does it work? The recordings are controlled by the moderators of the room and they can choose to have a recorded room with playbacks or they can have it not recorded. Now, Anyone can record on their own computer and you're not going to have control of that. You can even record on your home equipment, but the platform itself allows what they call replays where they record it and other people can go back and listen later. Say there's someone you just, you missed the front of the room or someone you want to hear what they had to say again, or if you want to share that recording with someone, you can do all those things. What some people have even gone to doing is recording and using that as their podcast episode when they have really great rooms. Now, you're, you've got a lot of choices there because when people set up rooms, those actual meetings, those rooms can look a lot of different ways. Sometimes you have one person who's teaching or sometimes pontificating um, and they're the only speaker to a group. Now, that would be an ideal situation to record. Most commonly, though, you're going to see people who have moderators in plural. There's going to be more than one mod, more than one person speaking, and those are the people who can control who else speaks in the room. So each room has three different sections. You have the moderator section or the speaker section. You have people who are listening to the moderators but are already connected to them, and then you have other people in the audience. And people give those different names, listening lounge, come on up to the sofa and talk, come on into the living room and speak with us, the stage, that kind of thing. But if you get a lot of moderators, a lot of speakers up there, I don't think that's going to necessarily make the best recording for you. You also have rooms that have different styles. Like some people, it's just a room where everybody's going to go around and speak a little bit. That may not be something you want to record because you never know what's going to come out of someone's mouth. But you can actually allow the replay to be recorded. And at the end, if it's not something you want attached to your profile or you want out there in the universe as evergreen content, you can just delete it. So this can be a highly customized experience, and Rena, people are using it in a lot of different ways. And what are, what are those different ways that people use it? I'm, I'm just curious. Uh, what do they do? Well, some people are using it to teach, and, and especially for coaches. You want to really show people your expertise and what you do and find your next client. But some people also do this as a service. Like I have a friend who um, is very big working with um, supporters, supports, supportive people in the lives of those with bipolar disorder. And so a lot of her work on Clubhouse is to serve other people who are caregivers for those who suffer with bipolar disorder. So she's really doing just almost a mission there. And there's others that are there to grow a number. They don't care what they talk about as long as they get numbers and following, because then they can take that outside the app and show that to sponsors and things like that. Most of this is more about smaller, intimate rooms where we are looking for connection. Now, some people are there to connect romantically. They're connect with friends. 
but overall it's mostly business. But there's even rooms that, you know, they talk about music and it's just completely social. But those of us who are there to do business, we're typically going to have the room set up with a few moderators, people we know, people we're comfortable with, people we trust in what's going to come out of their mouths. And we bring our followers in and cross populate our following to grow all of us and get us seen in that space as leaders and experts in the space. Does that make sense? So the moderator is somebody you have met and you trust them. So it's not somebody you're paying. It's not like a VA, something like that. There are paid moderators. I think that's a very unusual situation, but there are people who profess to be paid professional moderators on Clubhouse. I don't know why that would be necessary for anyone, but I moderate with people. I may not have met them in real life, but I've been in rooms with them or I know them virtually. There's some connection there or I've heard them speak in other rooms and I trust what they're going to say and our styles are compatible and we agree on how we want the room to go. But there's always going to be a lead moderator and that person is kind of in charge and she's going to kind of direct to that room. Now, you also have these moderating pods who get together and it's a group of maybe four, six, even eight or ten people who are committed to moderating together and they host different rooms slash meetings during the week. I tend to switch up the people I moderate with depending on the topic and so that I can actually grow my audience. It's not just the same audience following us around for the same things. And so I assume Clubhouse is free for you to use. Clubhouse oh, is a free app and it started out in beta as a available on the app store for Apple, but it's now available for all your little um Android devices too. And it's, you know, it's something that almost anybody can use easily. You're going to jump in there and figure it out. No harm, no foul, no cost. And, you know, even if you just go in and listen for a while, that's usually what my husband does. He doesn't ever speak, but he'll listen. And you can really curate an interesting experience. I know during the pandemic, there were rooms that featured doctors and people working in the medical field, researchers, pharmacologists, and I found those rooms to be fascinating just to listen to and learn, just like I would through other social media, like a podcast. But the ability for me to be a player on those stages where I can grow my audience and grow my following and grow my client base is just incredible. Where else do I have access to millions of people around the world? And I can tell you with the podcast, that was a great experiment. The, the app was still in beta when we were getting ready to launch, but we found out who our following might be. We confirmed that we could build a following and we were able to test out topics that we thought women would care about. So by the time launch day came for the podcast, we were able to host a launch room where we had some giveaways. We talked about how the podcast came to be. We thanked those who had supported us up to that point and let everybody know that the podcast was now live. And that was a really cool thing to be able to do, to know that you had the audience before you even hit the button to record. Hi, Gail. I'm Yuriko. Hi. I've got a question. Okay. I'm, I'm on Clubhouse and I'm in quite a few different groups. Um, as you said earlier, it's really easy to get sucked into it and then you spend hours on it. Um, obviously, not many people have that time. So if someone is starting on Clubhouse, um, you mentioned, you know, being very disciplined in where you go and how much time you spend and things like that. But these conversations can go on for a long time. So what would you suggest to someone who's starting on um, Clubhouse, how to how to find the right room to go to or, you know, how to stay there or what to watch out for? Is there anything that could help? Um, yes, it's all join Clubhouse? down to how you curate, how you answer some questions. And just like with all um, platforms, the moves you make are going to determine how the algorithm treats you. For instance, if you go into a lot of a certain kind of room, then the platform's going to think you want that kind of room. So here's some things you can do. First off, when you're completing your profile, 
be very choosy with the topics you select, those subcategories, because that's going to be the first way that your quote unquote hallway is curated. And the hallway is where you see the rooms that are taking place are available. Now, since the app came out of beta, there have been changes that allow us better ability to search for the topics we're interested in and the people and rooms that we're interested in. And we call that the universal search. And it's the little globe looking button at the bottom left. And you can search for almost anything and you can search for it by club, by person, or by event or meeting, what we call rooms. But those topics are the first place that the app's going to start to see the content that you want. It's just like on Instagram. The more you click on something, the more you're going to see of that thing. So that is number one. Secondly, it's going to be the clubs and the people you follow. So don't just go down there and follow every person or you're going to get some craziness. Now, if you start to get a lot of craziness in your hallway, you can tell the app, I don't want to see rooms like this anymore. Don't show me this anymore. And so you can start to, again, whittle down and curate that hallway and make it more specific to you. Also, if you keep getting like a certain kind of room or club show up to you and it's something you're not interested in, sometimes you can link that to a certain person you're following. Like if you see those rooms and the same person's always leaving them and you're following that person, you might want to unfollow them and they don't get notified or anything. This is really you know, one of the cool parts of Clubhouse. And most of us have so many followers and um, once you've been on it for a while that like, I'm not going to notice if you stop following me unless you're just someone who was really on my radar that I worked with and looked for a lot of times. So there's no harm to joining, unjoining, leaving rooms or clubs. It's okay. And that's going to help you to whittle down what you see in your hallway to be attracted to or distracted by. And then also the ability that even once you go into a room, if you can have the discipline to say, is this on point with the strategy that I'm employing to grow my business today? And if it's not, you leave. And this can be something that's scheduled in your week. You know, I'm going to look at a clubhouse room here, or you can actually do what's called ring the bell. Like if you know that I have a room every Thursday at two o'clock on podcasting, you can go in and follow me and hit always so that the app will show you every time I'm speaking. But as I create the rooms, the meetings, you can actually go in and set the reminder so that it will show you that specific meeting or clubhouse room. And so all of these are the techniques you use to curate your experience while you're on there. But just like anything, it's going to take discipline and a strategy. Know why you're there and keep that top of mind. Why am I here? Is this aligned with that? Is this room aligned with that? Is this relationship? Is this club? Why am I here? And when I got on the platform, I was very clear of what I was there for. And so I encourage you as coaches, you know, what is the tar target avatar you're looking for? What do you coach about? What are topics you can speak to and curate your experience on there by following those kinds of people and those kinds of rooms, and you'll get it off to a really good start. Does that help? Yes, definitely. Thanks. Thanks a lot for that. Um, and another thing that comes to mind is that, so I've been in rooms, you said there's big rooms, small rooms. I've been in big rooms where all these, you know, real experience people, obviously everyone builds their authority and then sometimes you might have something to say but you're thinking oh I put my hand up but I've got all these other you know people with their hands up because you have to put their hand up if you want to speak right um so uh, you know this whole imposter syndrome and and confidence and stuff like that how how would you someone is starting on this how would you suggest to them to build up the confidence to put their hand up and then speak out in you know, in, in the circles of these really experienced, you know, successful coaches or entrepreneurs. Do you have any tips for us? Sure. Well, first off, a big room like that is probably not where I would choose to make my first speaking um, 
you know, my first time that I raised my hand to speak, I would probably choose a smaller room. And some rooms are more conducive to welcoming up newbies. Now, when you're new on the app for the first week, you're going to have a little um, indicator on your profile that lets everybody know you're new. So most of us are going to be very welcoming. They're going to say, oh, you're new. Welcome to the app. And we're going to invite you up and, and try to carefully guide you through the experience. Now, in the smaller rooms, too, as you start to make connections with people that are real, you'll find people that are going to give you a chance. Like, I am a moderator in a lot of rooms and clubs, and I'm happy to give someone who's new, who, um, you know, is aligned with what I'm doing, a chance to speak and a chance to share. And typically, that's where you want to start. I started by asking questions rather than teaching or training. I went into rooms where I wanted to learn something. And just learning to use the microphone and learning how the platform works, asking a question is a great way to do that. Plus, you're learning something. And then you'll find out there'll be rooms that will give you the opportunity to contribute to the conversation. And some rooms will even invite you up. So there's two ways to get on that stage. You raise your hand and they let you come up or they invite you to come up and you accept. So you'll find in the right rooms, women especially, and women who are collaborative in their mindset, they will invite you up and they will give you a chance to say who you are and, you know, especially when they see that you're new. Another thing you can do is align yourself with people. Like if you're in one of my rooms, you might reach out to me on what's called the back channel, which is a way you can message me privately and say, hey, I'm new to this space. Um, I love your rooms. Here's what I do. If, if you could use me in any way, I would love it. And I might even come back to you and say, hey, let's co-mod a room together. And that would be me getting you in front of my audience and giving you a chance to lead and speak in a room. And so women that are on the app and I have this collaborative attitude, they're going to be helpful usually to you. If you're going in the rooms with a thousand people, those people are there for themselves. And there's a lot of things going on there kind of behind the scenes, like I said, with those numbers. Um, so those, that's not where you want to spend your time as a new person. Look for small, well-curated rooms that are drilled down to where you are really comfortable and kind of where you really live. Great. Thank you. So I guess my question here would be, the rooms are small because those people have small following or are they small because a small number of people joins? What does it mean in the... Um, clubhouse world? It can be any of the above, Rena. Um, some people can have very large followings, but they start a room and it's an odd time of day. Or sometimes what happens is there are some very big clubs out there, clubs with 100,000 and more followers. And if that club, unbeknownst to you, is holding a room at the same time you are and you share a lot of the same audience, they may be pulling the audience over there or someone might be having an event that's an all day event. You'll see that sometimes these, um, you know, an all day mastermind or an all day summit. And a lot of people that are in the shared space are involved in that. So that's kind of something it's hard to know unless you just really got did a deep dive on the research. Because we've done rooms with the same topics at the same time with the same moderators. And one week it'd be great. And the next week it'd be kind of lackluster. So it is really hit and miss. And so I don't put a, a terrible amount of time into planning rooms. My rooms are designed around topics I can speak out of very quickly, you know, off the cuff, very easily. Because you never know if that room's really going to make or not. But... There are some tricks to this. When you are a moderator and say, say you follow me, Rena, and you've clicked always for me, the app is going to show you any time I'm on the stage in a room. So because I have a decent following there, sometimes people will moderate me or invite me to their room because they know that's going to show that room to my larger audience. So again, that collaborative effort to align yourself with other people who have large followings can be very impactful to you. But 
again, I will back up and say this. The magic is not always in the big numbers. We've had times where they were very small rooms, but some very magical things happened that were beneficial. I remember one day I was in a quite small room with a lady, and we didn't even, like, have this great um, just immediate affinity for one another. It's not like I got off out of that room and said, oh, my gosh, I can't wait to be back with her. But I did respect what she had to say, and I knew she was an expert, and I wanted to do things with her. So we stayed in touch, hit and miss over the next few months. But one day, I got a message from her with an incredible opportunity for my business, and it has led to lots of new clients and lots of cash. So it's one of those things, Rena, you just never know. And whatever your higher authority is, God, the universe, sometimes you have to just sit back and let them, you know, let it work. And sometimes there's just magical things that happen. You know, if there's five people in a room, but those five people are your target client and they connect and want to do business with you, that can be better than a room of thousands where you don't really get to be seen or connect. Excellent. And that reminds me, so I began asking you, so Clubhouse is a free tool. Uh, what are, are there any uh, paid services, tools, options that Clubhouse offers that might boost your marketing? And how does marketing your club or your room work? Is there any feature of marketing your stuff? Somehow. Not that you pay Clubhouse for per se, but a lot of people on there will use like um, the Buy Me Coffee app or the, you know, these cash payment apps so that if you wanted to tip them, you could. Now, there are also such things as paid rooms. People can create private rooms so that the only people they allow in are people that paid a ticketed fee. Um, that's not the norm. You don't see a whole lot of those, but that's out there. There are also sponsored rooms, say you're going to talk about a specific topic and a company wanted to sponsor that room and get, get marketing, you know, value out of that. They may pay you to um, sponsor your room and have you talk about their product. That can happen again, not, not huge in that space, but there are some opportunities for you to advertise or market the rooms and clubs outside of the app. Um, they have a feature that allows you to share a snippet, say that you and I are in a room and someone says something really powerful. You can actually do what's called a clip. If clips are turned on for that room, that can be enabled or disabled. But I can clip the last 30 seconds and share that to my social media so that if some of my friends, followers, other people I'm associated with saw that clip, they might come jump in the room. They might say, you know, this is a fascinating conversation. I need to be in this room. Now, I personally have gone the extra mile and I do create graphics in advance for rooms that I'm going to be hosting, especially my regular weekly rooms. And so I've created some branding around it. We've also found that we enjoy giving things cute names. Like we have one room that's a recurring room that we call the Confidence Lab. And we, you know, talk about that beat, come back next week to the confidence lab. And they know that every week it's going to be a topic that deals with confidence, especially for women. So sometimes, you know, you can just get creative in your own branding and how you put it out on your social media. You can also share the room once you've created it. You can share the live link um, through your Instagram stories. And sometimes people will go ahead and click that link and ring the bell so that they get the notification. But you're going to teach and train your following um, to where you're going to be. My people know I'm not going to be on a room at 7 a.m. So if you're looking for Gail Scott, that's not going to happen. Um, I'm an afternoon girl. And so they will look for my rooms in the afternoon if they're people who really want to follow me. Now, also, when you log into the app now, the people that you are following, especially the people you are really active and engaged with, it will show you at the top if they're currently in a room. So if I logged in and you and I were connected, it would say, Rena is speaking. It would show me a little icon that shows me you're speaking, and I can click on that, and it will tell me where you're speaking. It will also show me if you're just listening, and I can say, well, if Rena thinks that room's good, I might think that room's good, and I can go see where you're at and follow you into that room. 
And that's a big way that rooms are grown and audiences are grown is people follow others that they know into those spaces. So the app has really come a long way with helping you to promote the rooms, grow the rooms, and they've given you these ways to even market the rooms. Excellent. And so what, I mean, a lot of people choose podcasts and Clubhouse, it sounds to me, it's a, also like a pothouse place and space. So what is the difference between the Clubhouse and the traditional uh, podcast? What, what advantages does it give you? Well, you know, with your podcast, when you have your own podcast, you're in complete control and podcasts are one, you know, unidirectional. We speak out to our audience. Clubhouse can be unidirectional or it can be, um, you know, a speaking to each other both ways, that two-way communication, three-way communication, you need lots of back and forth conversation. I can speak to the audience in Clubhouse. If they come up to the speaker's area, they can speak to me and they can speak to one another and to the audience. So that's where it's going to be different than a podcast where we're really pushing the information out. But I can tell you also this idea of a proving ground. My partner in the podcast and I, as we were forming the podcast, we start to do rooms together. And that's where we really discovered our style that we enjoyed. And we also learned a lot about each other's strengths and weaknesses and how this was going to look on the podcast. So that the day we turned that podcast mic on to record our first episode, we were already, um, you know, familiar with moderating together in Clubhouse. So we knew what each other was going to bring and what our personalities were going to be like once a microphone was turned on. And I think that was super valuable. So like in the coaching space, if you've got a new program or you're trying something out or you want to see how a, a collaborative situation might work, you can use Clubhouse to try that out and see how it flows. You can perfect it on there and you can see how the audience responds. And I can tell you like one of my most popular rooms is when we do audits because I'm also, um, I help people um, with their image, both on social media and in real life. And one of the things I will do is audit their profile pics or audit their bio, audit their Instagram feed, and just give them feedback direct and on the spot. And it becomes a teaching tool for everyone in the room. But that one person, if they're brave enough to raise their hand and come up, they get a, an enormous amount of value. Plus, I, as a consultant in the image space, get to show some of my expertise and really what I can do for you as a client. And that has brought me clients. And they've come to me pretty easily because I, it's demonstrated rather than just talked about. Excellent. Thank you so much. And so beside Clubhouse, what other social media do you use to support? Is Clubhouse your, your main strategy hub? And, and do you supplement it, complement it somehow, somehow with other social media platforms? Because you don't have the video there, right? You just have the audio. You just have the audio there. Now you do have that profile picture. And the cool thing about Clubhouse is they allow you an amazing amount of real estate for your bio. So you can write your life story basically on there. But another cool thing is Clubhouse links to Instagram and Twitter with a click of a button. So Instagram is my main space I hang out and where I put the majority of my content, but I do use Facebook, Facebook groups and Clubhouse as well. And they all work together. I really try to align my businesses to where they feed one another and the platforms feed one another. So I will advertise my Clubhouse rooms on Instagram. And when I'm on Clubhouse, I refer people to follow me on Instagram. So there's a back and forth there. And one of the things we commonly do when we're in a room is we tell people where to find us and we will say, please give your moderator some digital currency. So again, that's where being a moderator and being seen as a leader can be really important is when you get up there and you speak and people resonate with what you're saying as a coach, a teacher, a trainer, a consultant, whatever you are, they're going to be more likely to follow you out to those other spaces. So you want to have those other spaces ready to receive them, ready to collect email addresses, ready to tell them the next step. So Rena, a lot of people use this as a funnel 
whether it's a sales funnel or a lead funnel, if you will. I'm, I don't really like that name. It sounds a little bit disrespectful to people. I'm going to put you in this funnel and you're going to go down, down, down. I don't really like that name. So I'm going to call it more lead generating, but the ability for people to click of a button to follow you to your Instagram account is really super important. But again, it's also important that that Instagram account, and this is the kind of thing I help people with, is ready to receive them. Because what we find sometimes when I, as a podcast host and in the business world, collaborating with other women, I will meet someone and I think she'd be a great guest on the podcast. But when I follow her out to her social media, it doesn't really seem to be in alignment with what she was talking about in the clubhouse room. So in my consulting business, that's one thing I help with women with is get this all lined up so that like for me, when my clients follow me out of clubhouse and go to my Instagram, there's no confusion that this is the same person and she's talking about the same things. Because Rena, I think when we are talking about lead generation for our businesses, anytime there's a moment that they have to make a decision or there's a moment where they could get confused, that may be a moment you lose them. So it, that confusion can be, is this the same person? Is this what she really does? Um, is she, uh, 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 all those things, you know, that people start, they'll just give up and that, that link is lost. So I help my clients make sure, like you're talking about, that these things are in alignment and they're working well together. And if you're really smart, you can just create this harmonious community of your social media platforms and all the places you are. And you can do that with great bios, great headshots, branding colors, the, the topics you talk about, these things are important. And it's also important that you avoid some things. Um, like we had a gal that we were thinking about having on our podcast, but she kept popping up in my feed on Clubhouse in rooms that I was uncomfortable with. And so that told me she, I may not be confident in what I'm going to get from her on my podcast. So it's also a space where you can kind of check people out. And so when I saw that from her, I thought, no, she's not really the guest I want. So we want to be careful because people can see the rooms you go in. But I also vet people by following them out to their social media. So as a professional, we want to make sure our other social media is aligned with this and any other app that we're involved with, whether it be Clubhouse or the Wisdom app or Fireside or any of those. We want to create a suite of places where people can connect with us but we want to make sure that that suite is on point, it's strategic, and it's in alignment. And so for your strategy to work, I mean, Clubhouse can be time consuming. Do you, do you help, help, help anybody who is helping out with your social media? Besides... Um, I don't have help because I'm a very organic poster. I know that sounds terrible. Like my posts are not scheduled way in advance. That just, I'll be honest, Rena, that makes me a little bit nervous because I am that person that just am very passionate. I have things that I want to say and talk about. Um, so I work a little more organically, but with intention and with strategy. But a lot of people do. They have people who are managing their social media. And this is really important, guys. If you're doing that, you've got to make sure that person really knows your essence and your voice, or otherwise you're going to get that disconnect. Someone's going to follow you out of Clubhouse, super excited to work with you, and they get over to your Instagram and they're going to go, is this the same person? The message is not the same. The branding is not the same. The message is not the same. So it's really critical that was we hire people to do things and make sure when we do that, it's not going to interrupt that flow and that connectivity. So when you're looking to hire someone, you may hire someone to help you with your graphics. I would rather you do that than someone do your posting for you. You may hire someone to, um, you know, set up all your social media so that it's in alignment. You may hire someone like me who helps you come in and get it on point. Like I come in and I tell you where I think you're missing it. I help you firm up your bio, your picture, your branding colors, and get it to where it looks like it's the same person. But then it comes from you. And it's all about your essence. 
So there can be some mistakes that are made there. What I've tried to do, Rena, is look at my businesses and say, what doesn't need my fingerprint on it? And so things like shipping packages, running to the post office, organizing products, because I do have a product-based business as well. Those kind of things are the things that I have handed off to my assistant. And guys, I'm going to really encourage you. This is an old term. Get yourself a Girl Friday. Um, those of us who are older, if there was this lady back in the day that that was her job, she was a Girl Friday. And that basically meant she was your right-hand girl. She was kind of like your wife. So I have a gal who comes, and if I need her to run to the post office, she does. If she, I need her to get me lunch, she does. If I need her to organize products, she does. Um, if I need her to go through my inventory, she does. If I need her to organize the Tupperware under the cabinet, she does. It's whatever I need. So be open-minded and really ask yourself what you need in these spaces. As far as Clubhouse itself, where you might get help is aligning yourself with people who can bring in an audience more than someone you would pay to do any services for you. But you definitely could pay someone to say, look, I'm going to be working on Clubhouse. This is what I'm doing. Help me make my other social media align with this. So does that answer that for you? For sure. I know when Clubhouse came out a few years ago, it was there was a big hype and everybody was talking about it. Lately, I don't hear that that many people talking about Clubhouse. What might be the reason uh, things coming down there? Um, is it growing? Is the platform growing? Um, what's the future look, looking like? What do you think? Here's what I'll say about that. The opinions are varied. You hear people say, oh, Clubhouse is dead. I'm thinking, What's well, funny that it's dead because I was just on there yesterday and had a good room and people came and listened to my podcast. So if you're looking to build huge clubs and huge followings, I think that time period has passed. I think when it was in beta, some people jumped in early and they were super early adopters and they built huge clubs that were really strategic and wise. And those are the clubs you see with 100,000 followers. That's okay. That's not really what I'm here to do. I'm here to fuel my other businesses. And so it all comes down to what are you there for? Are as many people in there? Maybe, maybe not. Are the people I'm looking for in there? I find they still are. And I find that we have filtered out the people who weren't really collaborative and the people who weren't really serious. So I kind of like that some of the people who were just not really engaged have been weeded out and we're left with the people who are being serious about collaborations and growing businesses. And we're left with women in my space that, you know, they're interested in growing me. I'm interested in growing them and they know how the app works and they're serious about using it as a tool. And I'd rather have 10 quality people in my room who are interested in really what I do than have 200 that are just, you know, have nothing better to do on a Tuesday afternoon. So I think there have been changes, definitely. I think numbers are down in some areas, but my target client is still there. And I have gotten so much business. I have gotten business for my product-based business. I've gotten business in my image business. And we've certainly built a following for our podcast. So I know that there are three specific areas that I've had clients come from. And so I think that's a good proof of concept that it can work for all different kinds of businesses. That's a, that's a definitely good point because I'm so unfamiliar with Clubhouse. I've never used it. I, I'll be honest about it. That's why I'm very curious about whether it's um, it's still a good time to get on it. How can it be used? So I'm glad to see you've been there for a while. I'm ha happy to hear your stories, your experience with it and um, what works, what doesn't work. And um, any other observations before we wrap up? Well, let's say if you're interested in it, try it. If you know someone who's on it, align with them, let them know you're going to be trying it, ask them for a little help. Also look for the rooms that welcome new people. There's a lot of rooms out there on getting started on Clubhouse. I teach some on occasion that I call um, 
manners and etiquette for Clubhouse. So I'll teach you how the streets really work kind of thing. Because, you know, there's always the rules that are put out there and there's always the here's the guidebook. But I'm going to come in and tell you this is how this really works. Like, don't pitch and ditch. Make sure you support other people. Follow people out to their social media. Ask for what you want and need. Have your offers ready. Have a clear directive of where people can find you and um, those kind of things. And so we talk a lot about that in rooms. There are people out there holding rooms. So you can kind of get all the help you need um, to get started. And here's what I would say, Rena. If you're interested, give it a try. No one's died from trying Clubhouse. It doesn't cost you anything but a little time and effort. And you can tip, dip your toe in the pond slowly. I, I recommend you go in there and find the people you know already on the app and connect with them so that you can start getting your um, hallway populated with things that resonate with you. And that'll make it a better experience right out of the gate. But yeah, I think anyone who has something to teach something to offer, some business they're building, a ministry or a service that they want to share, it can be a fantastic platform. And you can do it in your pajamas. Do you think Clubhouse is going to be int introducing video anytime soon? I don't see that happening. Now, I could be totally wrong. I haven't... Um, I haven't heard anything about that. And here's another cool thing, because we were, many of us were there during the beta, the founders actually hold a town hall every week and they talk about what's going on with the app. They take questions. They tell you where the app's going, what they what they can do and cannot do. But I think this is like, I talk about podcasting. This is an audio app. I would be disappointed if it went to video. I think there's other places for that. And I think that's a different tool and a different animal. And I say that about podcasting because we do not um, put out the video of our recordings, even though we capture that. We don't use it because I think podcast listeners are unique people and they're here for the audio experience. And I would be sad if Clubhouse made that change. I'll enjoy the audio experience. If I want the other things, there's other places to go. And I actually think it would be distracting to see all the pictures and the fidgeting. I mean, you Come on, Rena. You've been on some Zooms that you thought, kill me now. These people have lost their minds. Can you imagine 100 people doing that, fidgeting, you know, their appearance? It's really cool to just listen. And it allows also you to do that while you do a lot of other things. Like I was putting on my makeup this morning and I was listening to a clubhouse room. I spoke a little bit. I continued to listen. If that was a, audio, a video platform, I wouldn't be able to do that. So I hope they preserve what it was originally intended for and the way it was originally aligned. And I'm sure there'll be a lot of people that would disagree with me there, but I'm a purist about that, Rena. So uh, how can people connect with you? Well, of course on Clubhouse, you can find me, Gail <laughs> Scott. And I have a I have a club on there called Midlife Moxie. Our podcast is available on all the um, major platform players: Apple, Google, Ghana, all those. And it is called Midlife Moxie, M O X I E. And then if you go on over to Instagram, you can find me at at Gail S Scott. There's two S's in there. And my my company is Shine on Image Consulting. So connect with me in any of the places. If I can help you with anything, if you're going to hop on the clubhouse, hit me up and I'll take your hand and bring you into the fold and we'll have a really good time. <laughs> thank you so much. I really love this conversation with you today. And thank you for sharing your wisdom, your experience and all the best with your clubhouse journey. And uh, I'll check it out. <laughs> I'll put it on my channel. I'll see you and... over there, Rena. <laughs> we always own our podcast. Go and get your moxie on. And on Clubhouse, we always tell you that we'll see you around these Clubhouse streets. So thanks for having me. Perfect. Thank you so much. And I've just put some of her links under the Facebook video. I'll do the same for the YouTube video. I think I'm missing a couple of links. I think you didn't give me all your handles. So if you can email them over, then I'll drop them all under the 
Facebook. Okay. And I can put some YouTube. of them here. Let's see what we have. We have the Gillis guy. The, the Gillis guy, and that those are my best. Th those are my P best. And then the, I'll put the um, the podcast in there. And so if you've got those, you can find me. Let's do this. I'm just going to drop it under the Facebook video. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here, for listening in. Those of you who've been watching us also on Facebook, I really love this conversation. All the best and um, have a great rest of the week. Bye. Gail, just stay for a sec. <laughs>